well, good morning, everybody. And uh, nice to see you guys. I really, really, it's touchy to see, you know, not just preaching behind the camera, you know, people behind the camera. And good morning for those behind that lens there. So today, uh, I want to continue part two of this message. Uh, about uh, it's the, the main title is The Most Ignored Truths of the Bible. So I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, but the Lord downloaded me many things that many Christians and non-Christian alike, they don't understand. They don't know what's in the Bible. So last Sunday, I started this series with the, uh, with the fact that there's, there was a, a pre-Adamic world. And I, I just don't want to go too much in that. But there was, seems to be between Genesis chapter 1 and chapter, uh, verse 1 and verse 2, there's a, world, there's a world system that seems to be have existed. And that would actually explain many, many uh, unsolved mysteries that, you know, uh, many, many, like, uh, they explore and they wonder what's this and what's that. And, you know, uh, so I believe, I believe that there was a world, it seems, and it was chaotic, and the Lord, when he created in verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1, it seems that he came to put it back in order. And that's a, a theory that we, you know, many of us have. I don't want to go back and stuff like that, but I'm just saying that there was, a, in the beginning, in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And then in verse 2 it says, the earth was without form. And uh, what old form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God was over and over the face of the water. So something happened to create uh, the, uh, the, the earth uh, what old form because it, it says in Isaiah chapter 45 verse 18 it says this. For thus says the Lord who created the heavens he is the God who formed the earth and made it. He established it and did not create it in waste but form it to be inhabited. And that word that they use there is tuhu in Hebrew, and it means waste, a wasteland. So God did not create a wasteland, right? So I went there and last week, and I'm not going too much there, but there was, there was something, uh, you know, and uh, it's up to God. I'm not sure what it was, but it seems that, and I, I believe my own tear, because later on, then I shared how Lucifer, so, so there's mysteries in the Word of God. And, you know, once you search God and you ask, Lord, what, what, what is that all about? Well, God had a plan. And so Lucifer, and Lucifer was a cherub in heaven. And one time he decided, uh, pride rose up in him. And what happened is he, he, uh, iniquity was found in him. And I don't want to read all these scriptures to prove my point. Because I did last week, right? But, uh, so God threw him out of heaven with one third of angels. So now, imagine that, because I'm talking about the seed war, because that's where I'm going. And so, Satan was thrown out of heaven with one third of angels. Now, if that would be like trillions of angels, that's a lot of angels. So you got to remember, one third, God has two thirds. Many people don't know that, but that's what we have. And so we're, uh, the world, people wonder, well, what is happening in the world? Well, uh, it's, a, it's a seed war. And so the seed war is that we can't see uh, these, uh, these fallen angels unless they make themselves known there. But they are there in the realms of the spirit. We can't see them. So that's why in Ephesians chapter 6, verse, I think it's verse 10, we don't wrestle uh, against flesh and blood, we, we wrestle against principalities, and he talks about ranks, and this, this is what Paul the Apostle is talking about. He's talking about in the realms of the Spirit, there's a battle, and the battle is fierce, and so the angelic host, God's angels, and the fallen angels are battling, and we can't see them unless, you know, but I'm just saying it, all the stuff happening in the world, all the stuff that has happened, it's all because of a seed war. Then I went and I showed you in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Genesis, uh, the uh, chapter 3, uh, God created man and woman, right? Adam and Eve, we all know that. And then I just want to go fast with this because I, I don't want to stay there. 
I could show you scriptures about Satan, Lucifer's fall and all that. I read all that last week. I don't want to go there. He was thrown out. Uh, well, I'll just read this one in Ezekiel 28 then. Okay, so I'll just read that. So before, is, is, Lucifer is described as being perfect and full of wisdom and beauty. And he was also in the Garden of Eden in heaven. Know that he, he was created by God and he was created by God. That's one thing we need to realize. He never, you know, one day he's not, one day he's there. So God created Lucifer and God created the angels. So they're all created beings. So they're not, you know, on their own. They were created by God. But it says in Ezekiel 28, it says this. And so there came a time where Lucifer was found to have iniquity. And in verse 14, it says, You were anointed cherub who covers, I establish you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of a fierce, fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as profane thing out of the mountain of God. And so, so he was cast out. Him and one third, he brought one third of fallen angels with him. And so they reside in the, in the first heaven, so that they have access to the earth. And so far probably has to do a lot of stuff happen in, in uh, Genesis chapter uh, verse 2, uh, verse, cha verse 1. Uh, anyway, anyway, I don't want to go there. But anyway, so it was a, uh, so these beings are real. You know, that's one thing that God wants me to emphasize a lot is that we wonder why are things happening around us and why it's so, so evil. It's because uh, the enemy is ramping up and intensify uh, the, uh, this evil uh, thing. So Lucifer was a cherub and seemed, he was not an archangel like some uh, people believe. He lived on the mountain of God, meaning God has a mountain. He was thrown out, he was thrown out to, uh, upon earth. So that's why Jesus says he's the God of this world, right? Right? So that's why you could offer Jesus when he was tempted 40 days, uh, 40 days right? You remember that part when Jesus started his ministry? And he offered Jesus the whole earth. Why? How could he do that? It's because it was given to him. How was it given to him? Well, he actually got it by stealing it from Adam and Eve. And so we're going to uh, just go that because it needs this part here has to be shared a lot because that's... Uh, uh, the fall of man is where uh, the seed war started. So you got to remember. You got to remember this. Everything that we're fighting right now is a seed war. Okay? And so uh, Adam and Eve, uh, they were tempting. God said, you can't eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So what does that mean? Well, at that time when God created Adam and Eve, they were perfect. They had carried the glory of God. They didn't even know they were naked. There was no evil intent in their heart at all because they were pure and holy. Okay? So, but Satan comes. Why does he come? Well, he's angry at God. And just like I said, he got thrown out. And so he's got vengeance on his heart. And to this day, that's, that's what he's doing. So if you wonder why is all that evil doing and people are doing things, they're evil things because they're possessed by him without knowing it. And he's doing things through people. And he's doing things, all kinds of perverted things and things that we have a hard time comprehending. But it's all because of him. And he hates humanity. And I believe that that's what God wants us to understand more than anything else. If you're going to understand what's really happening in the world, you need to go back in time. And we need to understand that this is what we're fighting for. As a church, as believers, and non-believers. And people in the world... People don't know this. They don't know what's happening, but we know, right? They don't believe. Some don't even believe that the devil is real. He actually succeeded in, in forming a thoughts and people. Oh, the devil, you know, what they think is just a, you know, somebody with a pitchfork and all. No, 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 no. No, he was, he was beauty. He was like, he's smart. But well, I'm not going to give him too much glory this morning. But he's not, he's not that at all. But he's real. And one day his days are numbered, and that's why he's increasing things. So we need to understand these things, right? So I just want 
Okay, so I'm just going to go back to Genesis because it needs to. So I'm talking today, I'm continuing with the seed war. But you really, we really have to understand what is that entail. Why did that happen? In Genesis 3, 1, we'll start there. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had God had made. And he said to the woman, As God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, may, We may eat the fruit of the tree of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat, nor shall you touch, lest you die. Now know what it says there, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will surely not die. For God knows that in the days you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now remember, Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve didn't know evil at all. They didn't, know, they didn't have that, that mindset to, to do evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she sh took it of its fruit and ate, she also gave her husband with her, and he ate. And then the eyes of both of them were open. Something happened. When they ate of that forbidden fruit, their whole world changed. Somehow, sin nature, sin entered humanity. Sin entered them. Their eyes were open. Now they knew what it was to do evil. And that's the part that God doesn't like. And that's what we're facing today. Evil. Like never before. But we were not created to do evil. We were not created. We were created to be like God. Like, I mean, just to be a good person. Good humanity was created for that. Amen? And then, you know, we can see that, you know, in the, uh, uh, and then we can, uh, then God, when that happened, then God is walking in the cool of the day in the garden. And that's, that's you know, I don't know how it looks like, but it seems that he walked the earth and uh, he was looking for Adam and Eve and they were hiding and they, they covered themselves and you know the whole story. And God said to the woman, what, what have you done? And I shared that part last Sunday. What have you done? Meaning in his heart, his heart was broken because God, God the greatest creation ever is human, humanity. We are humans. Humans are created Nobody is the same. We are a perfect creation. And to him, separation came and he could not have fellowship with humanity. He could not have fellowship like he wanted, he used to have with Adam and Eve and to, to us. But he came to restore that, right? And so, uh, so note what it says here, and I'm talking about the seed war because this part is really important for us to understand. Because this part here will answer every, every question that every person has why we're facing such evil today. And then I'm going to explain to you how he, he, he went in and started this. But he started a seed war. And so in verse uh, chapter 3, verse 14, So the Lord God said to the serpent, that's Satan, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle. And more than every beast of the field on your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. That part I don't fully understand, but it seems that snakes used to walk. You know, when I rest my, that's what. Yeah, they, they, found, they found parts of their body they, they had used to have. It was made for legs. So I'm not sure about that part. But the next part is important. And then I will put enmity between you and the woman. That God is talking about Jesus. And the birth, virgin birth of Jesus, that's what he's talking about. He's actually pointing, he's telling Satan in the future, you don't know when, but I'm going to deal with you. The woman, the seed of the woman, meaning a human being, will deal with you. Okay? And then, and between your seed... And her seed, What's, what is his seed? His seed is the fallen angels. The ones that fall on him and whatever else it carries. Uh, you, you, I'm going to share some stuff this morning uh, that you will be amazed. Because some of you don't even know uh, that there were giants on the earth. But that was one of his first attacks. He created another uh, utter, uh, huge p 
people, and people wonder, well, you know, no, that's in the Bible. Okay? So, and between your seed and your seed, and he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise your heel. So this was prophetic. Years ago, at the beginning of time, God said to Satan, Oh yeah? You wanted to revenge against me? Because I threw you out of heaven. I'm saying this because I'm just saying these words. He didn't say that. But probably taught that. I'm going to deal with you. And I'm telling you in the future, there's a human being that's going to deal with you. And he's going to crush you. And he was speaking about uh, believers. And he was talking also about Jesus which he birthed the church, right? And so Jesus, God is pointing the finger and tell him to Satan, in the future, you're going to be dealt with. But I'm going to use people. And so it's the seed of the woman. So that's what he was pointing at. It was pointing at a specific time in the future that God will deal with him. And so here we are 2,000 years later, after the church age was birthed, and so this is, the, he was talking about us. He was talking about Christians. He was talking about Jesus, the power, the, our, the Holy Spirit inside of us. He, he was talking about one day I'm going to have a people that have a zeal for me, and it will be full of the Holy Ghost, and they're going to deal with you. And they're going to cast out demons, raise the dead, they're going to heal the sick, and all these things. And it started in the book of Acts, and it still hasn't stopped for those who believe in that. Right? So that's what he was hinting. And he was, one day I'm going to have a people that are going to deal with you. So if you wonder what you're do, what, what's happening, and how can these things are, it's because we're at war. Whether we want it or not, we will always be at war. We don't see our enemy. And so that's what Jesus came to reveal. What, what, why do you see in Luke for chapter 4, verse 18, what did, what did Satan came to do? He came to destroy human beings from within, right? So the sin nature causes people to do things they don't really want to do. And I'm not going to go there in Romans chapter 10 and chapter 8. It talks about sin and the power of sin and all these things. And the first murder, Cain murdered Abel. And, and God approached Abel. Uh, Cain, he says, well, you know, sin is crouching at the door. But you must master it. Well, sin is a, a mindset, an evil an evil mindset that wants to do wrong all the time. So that's what the enemy carries, right? But our part, our part is to heal the broken heart. It's to, to, so he, Luke 4, 18, Jesus said this. And he was speaking about, again, the seed war. It says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he, uh, uh, he has anointed me to proclaim the gospel to the poor. I share that for those on the camera because we have it on the wall. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. Broken hearted of what? Well, access to the mind of the enemy loves to give and make people think like they're worms. And so that's what he came to do. Jesus came to heal the broken heart, to proclaim deliverance to the captive. Captive of what? Well, captive to the enemy's lifestyle. Cam ca uh, captivity to, to everything that has to do with evil. And how a person will have low self-esteem and sickness and disease and all that. He came to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim deliverance to the captives and new sight to the blind, to set at liberty uh, of those that have been crushed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's what Jesus came to do. And so sometimes, you know, we as believers, we, we, we wonder, well, well how, this thing, how, how come it's chaotic against me? What's happening? Well, it could very well be the enemy wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. And he will use any mean. He will use people. He will use, especially use people that are, don't know God, and they're full of the devil, and uh, he's going to attack. And our part is to stand in faith and not believe the lies and move on and forgive, forget, uh, for, forgive, and all these other things that goes with the heart of God, right? So what I want to clarify is that we are in a war. It's a seed war. And that seed war will always until, and, uh, and you know when it's going to end the seed war? It's going to end when Jesus comes back on the earth. Before that, that's where we're at. And so, uh,
And so the seed word, I want to continue the seed word this morning. So I just hopefully I recap there, good? So let's go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. Many people don't know this. And, uh, you know, hopefully they don't cut me off. But uh, many truths, if you would go, if you would go and uh, go on Google search, uh, or, uh, or if they haven't taken it down, uh, you go Google search uh, for giants, okay, so giants, you will find old clips, old uh, pictures from the old newspapers of uh, super huge skeletons and heads of people. I'm talking about, oh, some say we don't, Goliath was 13 feet tall. Yeah, that's big. That's pretty big. That's a really big dude. Uh, but uh, I've seen uh, pictures, old black and white pictures of, uh, you know, uh, a skeleton taking the whole street. All of that. Uh, where, you know, it's above, the picture's taking above, and you can actually see people driving around, and I think that one's in Russia, and a whole skeleton takes the whole street. That's, you know. And I've seen skeletons where the head is probably the size of, uh, of uh, you know, we could fit a few people just in there. Like. So I'm talking about, uh, you know, so they don't want people to exaggerate, but I've seen pictures it's impossible. They're not 11 feet and 12 feet. Some are 30 some feet. Some are even. It, it's some say 100 feet. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know about that, but I know they're big. But you can search that. You can actually search that and see if I'm lying or not. But what I'm going to speak of, this is the world. So the first seed war was there's 200 uh, fallen angels. They made a pack on Mount Hermon. Exactly where Jesus said the gates of hell should not prevail against the church there. We went there, me and Helen, by the fact. They were on top of that mountain there. And they made a pact. And they decided, well, you know, uh, we're going to hurt, we're going to just do this. So they decided to do this. So this is not in the word, but it's proven fact. It's in some uh, uh, Hebrew text, Jewish uh, books that shows you that. And so they made a pact. There were 200 of them, and they, they all have a, different names. And so the, uh, anyway, there was, uh, there was, tw- anyway, they don't have to go there. Genesis chapter one, 6, verse 1. To prove what I'm saying is true. And so we're talking about the seed war, right? So this is what happened. This explains, before I continue, this explains why there's certain things that were built that it seems like cranes today and the equipment we have today can't even, can't even move that. Those stones and all that. Well, that's because there was big human, big giants on the earth. For some of you behind that camera, you might say, are you crazy? I'm telling you. The Bible says so. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God, meaning the fallen angels, 200 of them, uh, saw the daughters of men, and they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves for all whom they chose. Verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall not be 120 years. These were, there were giants on the earth in those days, and afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men uh, who were of old, men of renown. So uh, there were giants on the earth. As a matter of fact, when they, they went into the promised land, the 12 that went there, remember that story? There were still some giants there. And so they came back, and we, t- we read that, oh, we look like grasshoppers. Well, it literally means they look like grasshoppers, meaning they're super huge. We can't beat them. And so 12 of them went, and only two of them, Caleb and Joshua, had a good report. The rest, they just, they just couldn't believe that God would be able to help them defeat those huge uh, giants. So these, these are not... These are not lies. They are real. This is true history. I'm talking about uh, uh, earthly history here. I'm not talking. I'm talking from the word of God. And so this was actually the first seed war. The first attack 
on humanity. And uh, I know where, you know, the other, there's other books, Jewish books, some of the old saints, the first of uh, the church, the, old, the beginning of the church, they used to read these. They're, he, uh, they're historical books in some anyway. anyway. But uh, there's one of them that it says that uh, they we even went to the extreme of created other uh, animals, like giant, uh, giant uh, animals. So whether that's true or not, but there is proven fact that they found our, in our archaeologists, they do find some weird looking animals in uh, half man and half, uh, half uh, animal. And uh, we shouldn't be surprised because they're starting to do that today. I'm going to get there later, but they're actually doing that today. They're trying. When Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the, days of, uh, in the times of the end. So what was in the days of Noah? I just read you the days of Noah. There were giants. There was perversion. There was corruption. There was evil. And people there. So God had to destroy the earth. He had to flood it. So Satan's first attack on humanity was to create giant beings. Bird between fallen angels and the woman of that time. And some would say, well, I taught, you, I taught angels can't. They don't have the reproductive system. Well, somehow, I don't know how they did it, but they did it. So I don't know. I, I know they can transform themselves. If Satan can transform himself in an angel of light, that means they can transform themselves. So sometimes we look and we, people call them aliens. You know, I don't believe in aliens. I believe, I believe that they are, they, are, they are spirit beings, okay? And uh, they're fallen angels and they transform themselves. And, you know, if you see weird pictures and stuff like that, it's, it, they don't come from another planet. They come, they're, they're in the realms of the spirit. They're, they, anyway, that's what they are, I believe. And so other old ancient, uh, no, uh, okay. So now God has to destroy that civilization because of the intense wickedness on planet Earth. Genesis 6.5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that it had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds in the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. So he found, you know, so you know the whole story, right? The whole story is, you know, I don't want to read all that. I could, but I don't want. So God, you know the story. God gave uh, Noah. Uh, he says, I'm going to do this. And then it took a tinker between 120, 120 years for Noah and his sons and his family. They built this ark. This huge boat was actually found. Uh, it, it was found, and we know it's on, on that uh, Mount Ararat, close to Ararat. There's... Anyway, it's a long story, but you can actually see it today. Ron Wright found it, and uh, it was proven fact. They brought some pieces. It's true fact. The Ark of the Covenant, uh, the Ark of Noah's Ark, it truly has, uh, was built. And so God saves humanity like that. So against the seed war, right? So God, to defeat what the enemy has done, to the seed war, it had to, to, to bring that about. It had to destroy everything. Only eight survived. And you know the story, for those who don't read their Bible. You know the story, right? So that was the first attack on God and the seed wars. So Satan is still, he's still, you know, he's still at war. And then there's another war to happen. Genesis chapter 10, verse 8. So we all, another part of the seed war was the rise of Babylon Empire through Nimrod's influence. And, and you know, the Tower of Babel, do you understand that story? So we read it, and when, you know, you read that, you say, well, you know, whatever. But th it really did happen. And so in Genesis 10, 8, it says, Cush begot Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one on the earth. There's a, I could go deep in Nimrod, but I, I just don't know if I should. But Nimrod, uh, he's, he's got quite the history after that. And somehow he had something to do with, uh, something with the uh, fallen angels, and technology, but anyway, I'm not going to go there, but just believe that Nimrod was, her, was uh, used by Satan, Lucifer, to cause, to try to bring down God, and try, and they were building this, this huge thing, and, to, uh, and to, to, to just get away from God, 
and be on their own, right? And so in Genesis chapter 10, verse 9, it says, He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, therefore it is said, Like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalnak in, in the land of Shinar. So here he is, and so this is history. This is Hertz history, right? And so then in, in uh, Genesis chapter 11, this is where we see his attack. The first attempt of a new world order and of the Babylonian Empire. Ever heard that word before? I'm using that word because that's what Satan was trying to establish. He was trying to establish a one world government. He was trying to establish, and so God again had to deal with that, right? So in, in Genesis 11, 1, And all the earth had one language and one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks, and bake them thoroughly. They had bricks of for stones, and they, they had uh, house fat for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens, and let us make a, a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. Now, when they build that, I don't know if they found any remains of that, but I'm sure it's way more um, big than we think. And uh, remember, fallen angels were a help, uh, kind of helped them doing this far probably, so, you know, Fallen angels technology and all that. I don't want to get into that. But I'm just saying it could be very worse than we even read here. I'll leave it there. And then in verse 5 it says, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed the people are, in, are, are one, and they have one language, and this is what they begin to do. And this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. So God has to deal with them. So what does he do? So the Lord put a stop to another seed war attempt for establishing a world government or to get at God, right? So in verse 7 it says, "Come, God's saying here, come let us go down and, and there confuse their language and they may not understand one another speech. When they say they, it's probably talking, it's called about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the three in one, triune God. They says, hey, listen, you know, this is happening, we have to do something. And so they went down and they came. Uh, so the Lord scattered them abroad from there over all the face of the earth. So that's why uh, continents, you know, there's a place in the world where the continents split and, and the language and it's all another thing. But, uh, but that's what God did. God had to put a stop. So he gave different languages, right? To stop again the seed war. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the earth. They ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel. Because there the Lord confused the language of the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad from the face of the earth. And so, I just want to put it here in my notes. And so we are now seeing that same kingdom rise again. And that kingdom, that new world government, that government that, that wants to be separated from God, God, if you look at the book of Revelation, this is where that war will be uh, mostly about. Against Babylon the Great, the great harlot, right? We all read that. Well, this is the same thing that's going to try to, they're going to try to, to, to make again, but God's going to deal with it. One final blow. <coughs> and we all know that the Antichrist will be a ruler of that kingdom, of that uh, Babylon kingdom. And uh, we can read that if you want to check that out. Read the book of Revelation. Far probably uh, starting, well, chapter 12, 13, and so on, you'll see that this, again, will, they will succeed in a way, and they are, in a way, succeeding uh, through evil entities uh, inside human beings that we, you know, we don't want to, you know, the worship of Satan is rampant now. People, uh, you know, 
you, if you wonder what's happening, it's because people are fully possessed by the enemy. Many of them. And I'm not going to go in politics and things like that, but I'll leave it for you to understand and search. So finally, as, as I close about speaking the seed war, we must not forget how Satan tried to kill baby Moses by having all the babies killed so that the Messiah would not live. So it's through the years, Satan, he knew that one day God would rise up somebody, a human being, and so here comes Moses. And uh, Moses was protected by God. He was a special baby. And God used him for many things, right? But the enemy tried to kill him. And I'll just read the story. In Exodus chapter 1, verse 15, it says, Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of whom the name of one was Shipra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When you go, you do the duties of a midwife for the Hebrew woman, and see them on a bird stool, if it is a son, they shall kill him. But if it's a daughter, then ye shall live. So he was after newborn babies, right? So he was after them. In verse 22, it says, So Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, Every son who is born you shall cast in the river, and every daughter you shall, you shall save alive. But God intervened. And so how do you intervene? Well, again, I believe it's a supernatural. God intervened. So, but God intervened by having Moses' actual mother take care of him. Verse, Exodus 2, verse 9. Take this baby and nurse him for me. The princess told the baby's mother, I will pay you for your help. So the woman took her baby home and nursed, uh, and nursed him. So again, I share that part because it's very important because I'm talking about a seed war. So Satan... One after the other, blow after blow, hundreds of years goes by, and he's still after deceit because he knows that his days are going to be numbered. So he's trying, he thinks he's going to outmaneuver God and be able to bring him down. But no, God is always ahead of him, right? So he tries to kill Moses, and then, uh, you know, going uh, for Jesus, he went for Jesus. So he knew. Uh, around that time, uh, that there was a, a baby would be born. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 16, it says, Then Herod, uh, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise man, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem, and in all its which, and in all its which he had determined from the wise man. What's that? So Bethlehem and its districts from the two years old and under according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. So here King Herod decides, uh, listen, uh, so the enemy uh, inf influenced him to kill all the two years in uh, younger babies. And so they did. But they, they miss out on Jesus because uh, God had another plan and he sent them away, right? You remember that story. I'm not going to go there, but God protected them, protected uh, Joseph and Mary and baby Jesus. So I shared that just to, for you to understand. There's a seed war and the enemy makes, he means business. He's trying to stop the prophetic word from Genesis chapter 3. And uh, the enemy, blow after blow, through the years, he's tried and he tried to really hurt God's heart and affecting humanity. <clears throat> so then, since the birth of the church age, Satan has caused the spirit of Antichrist to manifest itself through people, as to attack the church and every other living beings all over the world in some form or the other. So if you're wondering what were happening in the world today, and it's been going on since the church age started, there's the spirit of Antichrist, well mentioned in the beginning of the church age, and it's still going, prevailing, not the Antichrist, but the Antichrist spirit, Antichrist. So you saw it, you, you saw it in the Olympics, right? I'll leave it at that. So 
This is the result of that seed war. This is why these things are happening and ramping up. So it should not surprise us because the enemy's attack is upon the church and God himself. And if he can l succeed in luring people and believing a lie, he'll do it and he is doing it. And so that should not be surprising for us. But the church, I mean the real church that believes in the signs and wonders and are, are giving the devil a hard time. That they are giving the devil a, a hard time demonstrating and preaching the gospel by healing the sick, casting out demons, even raising the bed, sharing the gospel news in a nutshell. Every, par, every time that we, uh, we, somebody gives their light to the Lord, we're actually defeating Satan. We're attacking his, the seed war. The seed of the woman is defeated the scene of the serpent. So every time you bring somebody to Christ, you're actually hurting Satan. Why? Because he's losing big ground. So our part is to share the good news of the gospel, but also to, to, to do what Jesus was able to do, we can do too, as spirit-filled believers. How do you start the, the works of the devil? The, the first way, the first way is to use love all the time. Not hate, not vengeance, and all that. So God gives you his character. It's called the born-again experience. It's called a new spirit, a new creation inside. So you fight the enemy with love. But also you fight the enemy by praying for people, laying hands on them, and whatever else. The church, right? And it's still to this day. That's why the, the enemy hates the church. That's why the enemy, he loves when people don't go to church. He loves it. Because you stay at home, again, I'm after you, you know, if you stay at home, well, you know, I'm my own church, you know, I, you know, I just, well, no. The church is a body of believers. We just actually had communion this morning. It talks about the body of Christ. The body of Christ is the body of believers standing together, knowing each other, talking to each other, experiencing, you know, sharing their burdens, sharing their breakthroughs, all these things. That's the church. The church is not behind the four walls. Uh, uh, sitting on the couch. This, the church does God's business. And so that's how we defeat the seed of the serpent. We yield to God and we do his work, right? And so there's two kingdoms slashing. Two kingdoms. I was taking notes this morning and just, Dan, I don't know if you can go to Ephesians. I'm reading from New King James. And that's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. And so God gives the church some tools, right? He doesn't abandon. He gives us his spirit, his power. But he also gives us his promises, right? And so in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul wrote this. And he's talking about how to defend yourself and how to come against that seed of the serpent, Satan and his minions. And, uh, and so we'll start in verse uh, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on, the full arm, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Now know what it says here. So I'm I, I told you in Genesis, I told you the fallen, the, the fallen angels and all that. These are principalities. These are things we, they're government, uh, spiritual government entities. They're, we don't see them. But Paul says you're going to face them. And they're going to attack your mind. They're going to try to attack you in certain ways. But you must know who you are in Christ. That's basically what he's saying here. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, meaning people with blood in them. We're talking about uh, principality, but against principalities. So now he's going into the ranks of these fallen, in, fallen entities, these, these principalities. Now I'm not talking about demons. These are principalities. These are the fallen ones. Uh, the, uh, they have uh, ranks. Principalities against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly place. Now, know where they are. In the heavenly place. So we can't see them, 
they're in the first or second heaven. There's uh, many, uh, you know, God, some say God resides in, I don't know. No, there's, no, I'm, I'm learning lately there's more, but I, I don't know. But anyway, there's at least three heavens. So we are this, uh, the heavens, we look at the heavens and the second one, and then there's a third one where God resides. We were told God resides, but anyway. It's not a time to uh, say otherwise. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and have any done all to stand. So he's talking about you're going to come under attack by these principalities, but don't, don't give up. Know who you are in Christ. Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, you know, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. You, in a nutshell, put on Christ. That's what he's saying. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, in which you will be able to quench all the fuel darts of the wicked one, the devil, and take your, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this hand with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So here Paul is talking about a war. And he's saying you're going to deal with this daily. And you, I've given you an armor. God gave you an armor. Given me an armor to come against that. When it says in pray in the spirit, it's, I believe it's praying in tongues. Which some don't want to believe exists, but it's true today. Amen? Sour to break your bubbles, but praying in tongues is real. And if you want to pray right, you pray in a language you never heard before. And there you can actually deal with the realms of the spirit, the demonic realm. In a way that God gives you the words that flows through your lips. And does stuff in the, in, the, in, the, in the spirit. So, but I share that part just to, for us to understand that we deal, we're dealing with something that we can't see. But this is the seed war. And that seed war will only uh, be uh, fully, fully, fully uh, de dealt with when Jesus comes back. We're waiting as a church. We're waiting. There's a seven-year tribulation period that's going to happen. And then, and then the church, God's going to take the believers, his, the people that are true, genuine believers. One day we're, we're going to disappear. And it's going to be chaotic on the earth for seven years, the Word of God says. In the mid of those years, there's the, a rise of Antichrist, a man. Uh, uh, someone is going to rule the world. Is going to force a mark. Again, part of the seed war. It's going to force a mark on the people living on the earth if they want to eat and have food and whatever. They will have to take the mark. Other than that, they will be beheaded for their faith. Or they will have a, you know, they will, many will give their life to Christ. Then it will be too late for them. They will have to die for their faith. But we are expecting that very soon. And then after that, Jesus comes on a white horse with the saints and the angels of God. Praise God. He's coming back, and the seed war will be, uh, dealt, uh, the enemy will be dealt a dead blow. He's coming to reign on the earth. He's going to deal with all evil. Just his presence is going to do some stuff to uh, really bring down. He's going to tie Satan for a thousand years, okay? The Bible is very clear. If you don't understand, if you don't know, if you don't believe, go in the book of Revelation. So for a thousand years, Jesus is going to come and live with us on the earth. And, uh, and then... Us, the, the people that were resurrected or caught away in the church, and, by, and we're going to come back, but we're coming back with a resurrected, a spiritual body. But in the meantime, when the people on the earth, many will give their lives to God. And because of that, they will, re, they will, they will repopulate the earth. And Satan, because he was bound for a thousand years, he will be released for a little while. And that little while, they have to be tempted. So... Unfortunately, many, many will give their, their legion to Satan. And that God, then God deals with them and throws everyone in the eternal lake of fire, uh, Satan included. And uh, yeah, so that's... And then God created a new heaven and a new earth. Grand finale. No more seed war. God, may, God rules. God reigns. God, God has victory. We have victory. 
And so I just want to share that that's what we're dealing with, that God gave authority to us. And so, uh, yeah, that's the history of humanity. I could share many, many other things probably, but I just, I felt that the Lord wanted me, uh, the most in your truths of the Bible is probably this message here. Because many, many pastors won't preach that, right? Because they're afraid, well, you know, I'm going to create fear, whatever. No, people need to know the truth. You know, you know why we have a mess the way it is right now? I'm going to be very, very frank is that many out there in years past, they were not told the truth by religious people. And because of that, they turned their life around and they're serving other gods. They're serving Satan. Why? Because they, they saw religion. For them, it, they were not explained the full picture. But in order to know, and to, to know the, you need to know the truth. And the truth is, this is, this is part of humanity's history. If you have questions about that, then go to the Word of God because the Word of God gives us the real truth, right? So this message was really important, and that's one of the messages that God gave. That's the, for my first assignment, the most ignored truths of the Bible. I will cover many other things, many other subjects, but this is the one major one to make us understand where we are in the history of humanity and that we are war. Whether we believe it or not, we are at war. And the realms of the spirit that we can't see, they influence planet Earth through politicians and people. And uh, they influence. So that's how, while they work behind the scene, they, you don't see them, but they use people. And so if you're a battle that I just read you, Paul says our battle is not against flesh and blood, meaning human beings, but against principalities. So don't get mad at the person. Get mad at the devil and his minions, right? So is that clear for you? Because hopefully I've, I've shared some stuff that are hard to believe, but many things are you can go and search for them, right? Especially the giant. I know some say, well, you know, I don't believe that. Well, just go. Do an historical search. And... Uh, you know, every time they, found, they find some, uh, they find those bones, well, there's a whole team that comes and steals it and hides it. That's why we can't tell it. We can't see it anymore because they hid it. And I'm not going to name the name of the place, but there's a, a place it's all hidden. They are hiding. They are hiding history from humanity because they don't want people to believe the Bible and that God exists and his word is true. Yeah. So they hid it. So... Us people, us preachers, we expose it, right? We share it. No shame. So if people have questions, that's the answer. You want to know why there's huge buildings there? Well, they're used to have big dudes on the earth. You know, they found big prints and can all be proven. It's all there. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to share this. So we are at war, and that's, that's what Jesus came to deal with, right? Some people look at Christmas and Easter, and they think it's just a fairy tale. No, he came to, to help mankind, help you, give us life, right? So, Father, I just pray. I pray for the people here, and I pray for the people watching uh, online. will listen uh, on uh, podcasts. So thankful for podcasts. So many people being reached. But Lord, hopefully the people will start to understand that there's a whole history of humanity that was stolen from them. And uh, it's, it's written in your word, but yet they don't look at the word. But yet, today, Lord, you are using me and I believe many others that are sharing truth so that the captives may be freed. That the truth set the captives free. So, Father, I just pray that every person that has listened to this message now or will listen in the future, they will search the scripture. And they will, go, they will do some Google search or whatever, and they find out what I shared. There's a lot of truth to it, Lord God, and many pictures. And so, Lord, I just pray. And if there's anybody uh, here or behind my camera is not saved and given their life to you, Jesus, I pray that you will move upon that person or those people's heart right now and that they will give you their life, Lord God. 
they will get born again. They will be filled with the Holy Spirit, Father. I just pray for them. I pray they will give you a chance. They tried everything else. May they find you. May they cry out to you. God, I'm here. Come into my life. It's as easy as that. To, get, to be a believer, it's as easy as saying, God, I tried everything else. I'm trying you. Jesus, you shed your blood on the cross for me. I believe it with all my heart. I'm willing to live for you. And if you really mean it, right, guys? Then you'll get born again. And then your eyes are going to be open. You're going to be the truth, uh, know the truth. God bless, and hopefully I'll see you next week. Thank mm -hmm. you.